Flow FST class. We're going to go a little further, give you a little more information with the stuff on roots that we were talking about. Now, the last homework that you had was dealing with this here, like a, if you have X, here is your value, and you have a, the nth root of it. That's a little n there, and it might be hard to see in the video. That's an n. So that's the same way as this, the same thing as this equal, they're, they're equal equations. There are different ways of looking at it. So you've got to kind of go, be able to go back and forth with that, okay? We did all that on the last thing. And what you're thinking of is if you had, let's say we make it real simple. Let's say you have 16, and it is to the, let's say we want the square root of it. So it's like you have a little 2 there, right? You don't have to write the 2 for square root, but we know it's there. That means it's 16 to the 1 half power. So now you're thinking, you can think two ways. What is the square root of 16? Or 16 to the 1 half means the same. Now what it means when there's a little 2 there is what number do you multiply together times itself to get 16? Well, everybody knows that's 4. You know, give you an easy one to look at here to talk about. If this was the cubed root, you would have to say, well, what do you have to multiply by itself 3 times to get it? And if there's a little 4 there, okay, it's really called the 4th root. What do you have to multiply by itself 4 times to get it? Now, if it's 16 to the 1 half, I think everybody knows that's a 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. What if it was 16 to the 3rd root? Well, we don't know that, because there's no whole number that you're going to multiply by itself 3 times to get 16. What about if it's 16 to the 1 fourth? Well, if I take 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, well, it's really a 2 then, isn't it? So some of them you can figure out like that in your head, and some of them you're kind of stuck on. Well, on the last homework, they were all ones that you could pretty much do in your head. Well, what I'm going to show you now is how do you do this if you, you can't do it in your head. You're going to have to use your calculator to help you. So let's focus on that one that I just had up there. If it would basically be the cubed root of 16, which is 6, whoops, <clears throat> 16 to the one-third. Now, I know you've got a couple different ways of doing it on your calculator. I'm just going to try to show you one way, and then you can kind of use that as a, the way to go through all these so you don't have to keep switching back and forth in modes and all. I know that can get kind of confusing. So let me show you how I would do this. Okay, what you look at is the one-third part right here. Now, that's just the exponent. Just think of doing these just as using the exponent. Like, on your calculator, if this, if we had, let's say, 5 to the third power, now how do you do that on a calculator? Well, you take 5, then you hit that little up caret thing, as they refer to it as, that thing looks like that, and then you would type in a 3 on the calculator. So if you do that, and on my calculator here, you've got the 5, and then... A little button right there, a little up carrot thing. Okay, everybody, hopefully you can see that, that button right there. Okay, and then they're going to put to the third power, and it's a 125. All right, well, the question is, how do you do it that way if you're dealing with a, with a fraction, a one-third? Well, just simply turn the one-third into a decimal. So you're going to take one divided by three. Everybody knows that's 0.3 repeating. So what you would do there is you're going to have your 16 you're going to hit. Then you're going to hit that little up caret thing. And then you're going to put in the point 333 repeating. And you know, take it out even more places than that on your calculator. So I got 16, little up caret thing, point three 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 three, And I get approximately 2.51. Really, I'm sorry, I should round off. It really be if we're gonna go nearest hundred, that would be 2.52. And that means that if I take 2.52 times 2.52 times 2.52, do it three times, I should get 16. Now, if you check that, you're gonna probably see it's a little bit off because we've done a little bit of rounding there. Don't let that bother you. I'm not gonna get real picky on the answers and, and so forth with that. I'll tell you round it to nearest, whatever and you, you look for the closest answer. So that's kind of how you handle this when you can't do it in your head, okay? 
it's I know the calculator's got you can go second function, you can kind of find the root buttons and all that. I just don't want to confuse you with this since I'm not right there to, to help you by, by giving you a lot of extra buttons to do. So let's just try to make it simple. Do it this way. Now, if you do remember from Algebra 2 how to do it by finding the root buttons and you want to do it that way, that's fine with me also. I'm just kind of giving you a way to be consistent and not get yourself confused with the calculator. All right, so there'll be a few problems to try on that. If you've got any questions, again, feel free to email me. Have a good day.